Hey guys, it's Stell back here with you. Um, this is the second match I played when I played my handful of MW2 matches the other day. And I thought I'd bring you guys this one. Score is whatever. It's like th 36 and 19 or something like that. So I thought it was still a fun match. And it's long enough for me to continue uh, what I was talking about in the last video that before I was rudely interrupted by the um, end, of the, end of the video. If you remember, I was talking about the different weapons I used in the military. And we went over the M16, the, uh, the M4, uh, a little bit of the 240 Golf, uh, and then I was starting to talk about the SAW, or Squad Automatic uh, Weapon. Basically, what this weapon is, and I'm going to show you guys a picture of it, um, it's a machine gun. It is an anti-personnel weapon. It shoots the same rounds, literally these same rounds, from uh, of the M16 and M4, 556, uh, 5.56 uh, millimeter is the size of the bullet and actually I can take the entire bullet and casing out of that weapon out of the saw and put it in my M16 and it will still do the same thing. So it's that kind of, of a weapon. It is a belt fed uh, weapon meaning you see that green uh, um, drum underneath the weapon that he's shooting there. Uh, that's that's it's a cartridge drum. Um, and you can also on the side, I don't think it's on the side you guys see, um, you can stick a magazine in there. Now, nobody really does that because it, the magazines are spring loaded. Um, and when you fire at that high rate of firing as, as the saw goes, um, there's no way the magazine can keep up with that. It constantly jams. So there's no point of really having it. No one ever uses it. And there's two types of drums. You have the drum there that you have there. I don't know if I how many weapon uh, bullets are in that one. Um, and then there is a bigger one that has over a thousand, yes, a thousand uh, bullets in that drum. So th those are the, um, the other weapon that we use a lot. You can shoulder fire this weapon, and you can bring it up like an M16 or an A4 or an M4, um, unlike the 240 Golf or the Mod Deuce or the Mark 19. And I'll get into those, uh, at least the other two, in a little bit. This is a preferred weapon in, in as an infantryman. Um, when you have when infantrys go out, they have squad or fire teams, as they have, or they call them four man fire teams. Basically, the hierarchy or structure of a, of, a, of a platoon for infantry is you have your platoon, you have your three or four squads. In boot camp, we had four squads um, in our platoon. Um, in regular non boot camp marine stuff, you have three squads because usually your platoon size is not that big. Anyways, you have three squads, and in that three squads, you'll have four-man fire teams, and then a squad leader, um, and then jobs are divided up. You have a squad leader, you have your, your assault men, you have your machine gunner, you have your assistant, assistant machine gunner, um, and the machine gunner carries the squad automatic weapon. Uh, like I said, it is a, a, a shoulder fire weapon. It's very light. It's very cool. I did really enjoy playing with that one. Um, it's kind of funny, of all these weapons I described to you, I, I, I learned how to, you know, dismantle them, assemble them, and, dis and disassemble them. We used to play have races doing that. Um, who could do do it the fastest, and sometimes I won, sometimes I lost. It was still a lot of fun. But that was one of my favorites, too. Um, and I, we used that uh, a lot in our infantry training stuff, and of course we did carry one of those with us um, on our convoys. Uh, usually our command truck, the Humvee that ho housed our... Uh, officer in there that did all the communications and map stuff had a one of those weapons with him just in case we never brought it out or actually used it on anything but we had one all right another weapon we used um was the mark 19 this is if you remember from my um story time video i talked about this weapon that was a grenade launching machine gun this is what that weapon is it is belt fed as as um the other one is um it's pretty big it's pretty heavy it's pretty awkward and you shoot from a mounted position. Uh, it can either be on a tripod, uh, it can be, or it could be up on a, on a um, um, truck or mounted on a vehicle of sorts. Um, it is a pretty cool weapon, and I do remember uh, trying to describe how this looks like. Uh, when you shoot this thing, it, it, you won't get a sense of it until you see it at dark night. You shoot this thing, and it hits the ground, and it blows. The, 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 it's 44 millimeter, 44 mic mic, as we call it. Um, when it exploded, it looked like a big shower of sparks, for lack of a better word. Of course, there was a boom to it, but it was just a shower of sparks. Um, so without any other way of doing that. And I got a quick story to tell about that. We were driving in Iraq um, into Fallujah, Camp Fallujah. So we had all lights out going in through the ser serpentine uh, into the gate. And the, the entrance to this camp um, is right near a subdivision, I guess, of homes. 
Um, when we're driving there and it's lights out, no big deal. We're following the truck in front of us, nothing going on. And then all of a sudden we hear thump. And then right in front of my truck, no damage or anything was taken, uh, an explosion happened. One of these spark things like I described to you with the, for the Mark 19. Something hit the ground and just blew and it looked like a thousand sparks. Like a firework kind of a way of me describing it. And that was a mortar. That's what mortars look like. At least the mortars that they were using in an Iraq. We got mortared there. There's only like... I think it, only two mortars came in at us. One landed in between me and another truck. Um, and we had about maybe 50 to 75 feet between us. Um, and one landed right in the middle of it. And one landed to the left of us a little bit up a hill. So that was kind of interesting. At first we really didn't know about it. But once we got inside got to think about what the hell that was. We realized we just got mortared. Uh, kind of funny. And the mortars and, and this look the same. That's why I bring up the story. So that was a fun weapon to use, use it too much. We did have at least one or two on every convoy that we rode. One, one would be in the front of the convoy, one would be in the back of the convoy. Uh, it jam, had a tendency to jam a lot, um, but once you got it rocking and rolling, it was a pretty effective weapon. Uh, obviously, you had to be you had to be far enough away f from the from your target to really be safe from it, I guess. And then we get to my favorite one, the Mod Deuce. Or the, and the 50 caliber machine gun. This is the old, like I said, the oldest weapon. Let me see if I got this. Here. The oldest weapon in the U.S. arsenal that is used as for still its original use from way back when. It was conceived as a, as a machine gun, a heavy machine gun, and it still is a heavy machine gun. Now, like I said before, there are ceremonial swords that were used in combat back in the day in the Civil War uh, that are obviously aren't on the battlefield anymore. So those are, are there. Those are technically older, but this is the only weapon left that is still used for its original use conceived use. Um, back in World War II is when it came out. They used heavily in Korea, best especially in Vietnam, um, just you know all throughout uh, engagements in the military it's history since its inception. Anyways, uh, I love this weapon. We had it in the front of every convoy. It was my favorite weapon. Uh, I was pretty good at it. I was I was considered a lead gun and that was a billet as we call it a job that was held by guy you know your best machine gun and me and another marine to trade it off he was my driver one I was the gunner he was driving I was driving he was gunning that's how we went we, we were, I guess considered the two best machine gunners um, we knew how to take them apart we knew how to fire them we knew how to um, deal with them and, and unjam them and deal with them if they went down and that's why we got that job that was pretty cool um, I think it can suppress a tank. Now, it won't destroy a tank, but you can shoot at it and it will suppress it, uh, slow it down. Um, there was talk back in the day that there was an end of the rules of engagement, and rules of war, and Geneva, Geneva Convention things, that you weren't allowed to shoot anybody with this thing because it's so devastating. You, you don't even have to shoot this bullet. It's a huge-ass bullet, by the way. It doesn't have to hit anybody. If it gets close enough to a limb, let's say, or, or, or something like that, you're an arm or a leg, It'll rip it right off because the, the concussion and uh, the force that this weapon has, these bullets have, um, that come from this weapon. This is this how devastating it is. And then if it hit the person, God forbid, it would just be a pink mist. You would see the guy stand there, and all of a sudden, just be pink mist when these things start hitting hitting live things, live uh, living beings. Um, but there there was no convention rule engagement about that. Uh, we used it as a de deterrent to uh, vehicles to um, come at us. You know, we'd shoot to the left of them, shoot to the right of the vehicle, shoot to the left of the vehicle, and then if we needed to, we would take out their engine. And if they were still kept coming or still try to keep going, then we would shoot to uh, to kill them. And that was considered our rules of engagement. We had proper procedures that we had to follow uh, while we uh, were out on convoys, and that was the way we did it. Like I said, my favorite weapon. I love firing. I love messing with it. I took care of mine. Um, I know exactly how to take care of it. I wish I wish I could still play with it now. It was still a great weapon. Um, and it was pretty neat. Let's see. The next topic I want to talk about here is, you know, um, let's see. What, I'm trying to think of any other weapons we've got to use. You remember the, the China, the Chi is it the Chinaman, China something, G grenade launcher thing that in this game, in uh, Black Ops that you can use? Um, that's a, that's a Vietnam weapon. Um, and we used that too. That was kind of fun. We didn't shoulder fire because you would knock your damn shoulder out of your socket. We would have flat jackets on that had these breastplates in them, 30 pound breastplates in them. We would load up this weapon uh, with one of the rounds and then rest it up against our chest and just thump, 
thump. It was, a, it was a thumper, I guess. So I don't know what the, whatever the hell. It's noob two for all I, for you, if you guys want to call it. But it's that China damn weapon that that it's in, in Black Ops. So check that out. So that was it. So that was pretty neat. Um, I'm trying to think of any other weapons that we used that was pretty cool. You know, I did throw a grenade. That was during one of our combat trainings right after boot camp. Um, but I never threw another one. <laughs> I guess. Um, and that was pretty about it, much about it. I, that was my extent of the weapons that I used. I got to see an Enfield uh, when I was at CAX training or Desert training in um, 29 Palms in California. There were some Royal Marines there and they kind of showed us their weapons and that was kind of cool. But other than that, it's about all the weapons that I've seen and played around with. I'll get on to some of this gameplay. This is Scrapyard. This is one of my favorite maps back in the day. I, in fact, I have to admit, I like them all, even Downpour. Was, was still one of my favorite maps. I really enjoyed all of these maps. I thought these maps looked terrific. Um, and this one was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed playing, especially Capture the Flag. Capture the Flag on this map was a lot of fun for me. Uh, with all the little hiding spots and, and ways that we intertwine and get going. And this is my favorite shotgun. I still can't remember what the damn gun name is. It, it AA-12? I, I, I don't know. I love this weapon. I think I saw Woody use it way back when, way, way back when he said that he used to like it. I said, now you know what, I'll give it a shot. And ever, ever since then, that's what I've always used as a primary weapon uh, when I was uh, playing this game religiously. Uh, enjoyed it a lot. I was a pretty big heavy rusher. Um, my, my KD was horrible. I never had a one. Um, and I didn't care. But um, I really enjoyed uh, rushing around, and that was my favorite weapon of choice when I was rushing. All right, guys, that's the end of my video. Hope you enjoyed the little follow up. And weapons talk here. Uh, click like, leave a comment, rate, all that lovely stuff. Don't check it out.